All right, we're now going to actually start the last problem in pre-calculus. Now, we still have, we're going to do an introduction to calculus uh, the last week, but this is the last pre-calculus problem. And this is going to be, of course, a real-life problem. And it's going to be in parametrics because that's what we're working on. And this is very much going to be a physics problem. So, um, I'm going to say an object is launched at 60 degrees. So, an object is launched at 60 degrees with an initial velocity of 200 feet per second. All right. And I need you to set up a uh, parametric equations to model this example. Well, in physics, we have our free, um, our kinematic equations. And really where they actually come from, is, it's calculus, it's other stuff. But I can tell you in the x direction, we are going to have our initial velocity cosine of my theta t. And in the y direction, we're going to have 1 half g t squared plus v naught sine theta t plus h naught. Now g is gravity. Of course, that's going to be negative. v naught I gave you, theta I gave you. And h naught is your initial height, so if it's not zero, you can actually account for if it's above or below. Because um, if you're below and you're firing up a hill, it would actually your initial height would be different than your actual uh, landing point. So, all right. So to set up the kinematic equation is pretty straightforward. I'm just simply going to say, well, x equals 200. That's my velocity. Cosine of 60 degrees t. Well, cosine of 60 degrees. That's one half, so my x is going to be 100 t. There's my x equation, easy peasy. For my y equation, I'm going to do one half times, well, this is in feet per second, so I need gravity in feet per second per second, which is going to be, I want to be really nice and do negative 32 t squared plus my initial velocity, which is 200, and I'm just going to start writing underneath sine of 60 degrees and I have no h naught because it's starting at the same level. So my y equation ends up being negative 16 t squared plus, there's a t on this, plus, uh, this is going to be 100 square root of 3 t. Just use your unit circle and multiply. Alright, so now I have my x and my y equation. So this would be a. I would ask you for a. And then b says, um, how long is it in the air? Well, we know it's going to be here. It's in the. It's not in the air at t equals zero. And when it hits the ground, t once again is going to equal zero. That means my y or my height, my y is going to be zero. So I'm going to solve this one for zero. So I would do zero equals negative sixteen t squared plus one hundred square root of three t. Factor out the GCF. You're going to get t equals zero, and then t equal, let's see, this is going to be negative 16, nope, we get 0 equals negative 16 t plus 100 square root of 3, therefore t is going to be um, 100 square root of 3 over 16. So you throw that in the calculator, what do I get for that? Throw it in the calculator. We're going to get my t is approximately 10.8 seconds. So it's only in the air for about 10.8 seconds. It goes up, it comes back down in 10.8 seconds. All right. So that would be A, B. And of course, there's going to be a C and D on this. So let me kind of clean this up um, and keep working. All right. So we found that the projectile is going to be in the air when it's launched at 200 feet per second for 10.8 seconds. Now I want to ask you, well, what's the maximum height? Well, in physics, you'll learn that's half the distance. So you can do 10.8 divided by 2 and get 5.4. Or we can actually say, you know what? I know the maximum height. So my max in the y direction is going to be negative b divided by 2a. And then we can solve for that. So let's see. Ugh. So my negative b, so I want to get... Let's see, I want to get negative 100 square root of 3 over 2a. Well, this is going to be negative 32 
and this gives me 5.4 and it'll be seconds. So that's the time in which it's going to have, um, that's going to be your time when you reach the maximum height is 5.4 seconds. Or you could have just taken your time and divided it by 2. But this is another way of doing it, negative b divided by 2a. This equation is derived by taking the derivative of this abstractly and then setting it equal to 0. Um, so that one's fairly straightforward. And then the last part is d is what is the total distance? Oh, wait. On this one, I can say, hey, right, what is the ask you, when is it at its maximum height or at the x value? How far away from the original point is it at its maximum height? Well, if I know it's taking 5.4 seconds, I can just plug that into my x value. And I can say 100 times 5.4. This gives me, um, what? Move the decimal over twice. 540 feet. So it's traveled 540 feet in the x direction when it reaches its maximum height in the y direction, which is within 5.4 um, seconds. All right. Now from here, last but not least, is I want to ask you to determine how far did it actually travel? Well, this really is not terribly bad. I need to know how far is it traveled in the x direction. I need to know how, all right, so I want to ask you, how far is this actually traveled? So if I have my projectile here and it's gone this way, I'm asking you for this distance right here. This is an x distance. I already knew that this t is approximately 10.8 and this t equals zero. Well, if I'm asking for this x distance, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do, well, my distance x equals 100 times 10.8. Move my decimal two places. It's going to be 1,000. What am I doing on this? 1, 2, 1,080 feet. So it has traveled 1,080 feet in the 10.8 seconds. And voila, you're done. Hi, I'm Mr. Buzzer, and these videos are supplemental instruction for my students. If you found the video enjoyable, make sure you click the like button and click subscribe, as well as the bell for notifications to receive future videos on high school mathematics.